Hi, and welcome back to the new Mr. Stewart lessons, where I'm going to be doing a whole new series of lessons based on the uh, newer version of Greenfoot. And uh, today I'm just going to show you how to uh, create a scenario and put actors in it. So uh, what I'm going to do to create a scenario here, um, what you're going to do is just click scenario, click new Java scenario. Um, I'm not going to do stride in my previous lesson. If you want to see, look at my previous lesson and I'll explain why I chose to do Java and not stride. So I'm going to do a Java scenario and I'm going to, um, I'll just call this uh, my first scenario, not really my first scenario, but uh, it's the first one for this lesson. You can of course, call it whatever you want. And I'll click create. You should uh, think about what folder you want it to be in, um, what, what, you know, somewhere uh, that you can get at it easily. It's going to create, when you do this, an entire um, new folder here. It's going to actually create a, a whole new, um, it's going to create a whole new uh, folder, set, set of folders. Um, if you look, you'll see if you, you go in um, in there, you'll see that uh, it, it's going to create uh, a whole folder and there's a whole bunch of files and folders in here. I'm not going to talk about what those are right now. We can talk about those later, but uh, it's not just all in one. Um, it's not just all in one uh, file as it might be with some other uh, languages. So what I have now is I have a scenario and I have a world. The world is what you see right here. This is the world. Uh, there's code for the world. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to talk today about um, how to add an actor first. Let's uh, create an actor. An actor is a class of thing. It's a kind of thing. Um, and it's, it's, it's something that allows you to create an object. An actor is a, actor itself is a class, but it's, a kind of class where you, we can't create an object. We have to create a subclass of it. When I create a subclass, I'm creating a thing that has all the methods that are built into the actor class. And I'll show you what those things are in a minute. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a, uh, I'm going to pick a picture. It can be whatever you want. I will make a car right now. So I'll say car and I'll type call the name car. This could be called anything. Uh, I'm going to make it capital though. Capital letters uh, is, is important because um, it, it will work fine if you put it in lowercase letters, but this is a convention for Java. This is Java the language that all our classes should be uppercase. So I'm going to make it uppercase. I could call it anything though. It doesn't have to be called car. This arrow means this is of the type actor and can do all the things that actors can do. And I'll show you what all those things are in a minute, but let's look at the code for the car here. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about uh, everything that's going on here, except this is a class car extends actor. This is means the car is what, uh, what the kind of thing it is, and it is also the kind actor, which means it can do all the things the actor can do. And um, the other part that's important is what's called the act function. The act function is what the car is. You see it says what the car wants to do. This method is called whenever the actor run button gets pressed. If basically it's something that's going to happen again and again, um, uh, it'll just keep happening throughout the game. If you've played scratch, this is the forever loop, the exact same thing as the forever loop. Uh, if you did the con academy, um, enter to JavaScript. This is the same as the draw function. It's it's uh, uh, exactly the same thing. It's just what's going to keep happening. And uh, this in here, you can make your car do things, uh, your object. Uh, and if you want to know all the things that ca the car can do, what's really useful is if you hit Control Space, you're going to see um, all of the different things the car can do. You may not know what all those things are yet. Um, I'm going to pick an easy one that. You'll recognize if you use uh, uh, something like Scratch, for example, the turn command, right? So we say turn, right? Turn is what's called a method. It's something that anything of the type actor can do. And then we have in here, this is what we have in parentheses. Um, you've seen the same thing probably if you were in, uh, if you use Scratch, if you use Khan Academy, right? You, you have something that says, 
How much do I turn? I'm saying to turn. How much? It's the amount of degrees, right? And this is what we formally call this in programming as an argument. So I'm not going to turn a lot. I'm going to turn slow, like five degrees, right? One last thing. This is Java. You have to put in a semicolon at the end of most every line. And um, I'll show you the ones where you don't. Um, if you are doing stride, you don't have to do that. Um, but uh, I'm doing Java, and so I do do that. And now um, what I can do is I, uh, so now I can, I don't have a car yet. To add the car, what I can do is I click and click on here, click new car. Here's my car. I can put it down. And to make it do something, um, you notice this is the act function. If I want to make it act, I can click act and the car will act. It will turn a little bit, right? This will just call whatever's in the act method one time. So every time I call this, my car is going to turn five degrees, right? Most of the time, you're not going to do it this way. You're going to click the run button. The run button just keeps doing it, um, keeps, uh, keeps it going, right? And it continuously keeps uh, spinning the car around, right? This is uh, so very simple, very similar to what you might do in Greenfoot. Now I'm going to reset the screen, and you'll notice my car will go away. My car disappears. Where'd my car go? I put it in the game. Now it's gone. Here's the thing: your car was in in the uh, scenario that, uh, on the place here, but it wasn't really in the world. It was not in the world code. Uh, this is the code for the world. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about what is in there, except to say that nowhere in here is it say anything about having a car in it. We need it to have code to have a car in it. If I want the car to stay, I'm going to put it there. I'm going to do something called saving the world, which uh, is not like what um, the Avengers do. Uh, all it's going to do is save this little world of code right here. I'm going to click on here. I'm going to click save the world. And my world will pop up, and you'll notice it's different from what we had before. Now we have this thing that says private void prepare. Prepare just means this is a function that we call that will uh, set up the world, that will make the world exist, uh, that will make everything happen in the world. We have two lines here. It says car, car equals new car. So why do we have to say car, 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 car? Why do we have to say it again and again? What we're doing is we're saying, we're, we're creating, this is, a car is a variable. This is Java. In Java, every time we make a variable, we have to say what kind of variable it is. And uh, a variable can be various kinds. It can be a string, like a word. It can be an integer, which is a number. Um, but also, it can be a, a kind of object. And the kind of object this is, this variable is, is car. And it's um, saying this is a variable of type car. We're going to name it car. And it's going to be a new car. That's what it's going to be. And this just says, take that car here and add it to the world. Notice how there's three arguments here. One is what we're adding. And this is X and Y coordinates, where we're putting it, right? Um, and now, if I uh, reset, notice my car is still there. And if I compile, my car is still going to be there. Uh, if I don't like where my car is, I can put it somewhere else. I can uh, change this. I, I can uh, change the code right here, right? I can. Um, Put it uh, 150, uh, uh, 300, right? Um, and when I compile it, you notice my car is going to be somewhere else, right? So I can move it. Uh, if I add another car and I save the world, right? And I go back here. Now you can see there's car one, car two, right? There's two cars, right? Um, I can, and each one has its own coordinates. I can add another car just by typing the code. So let me put in a new car. I'll say car, object of type car, right? Variable of type car, we'll call it car three. Got to call it something different from the other two cars that we already had, equals new car. And uh, put a semicolon at the end of the line because we're in Java. And then um, I'm going to, uh, so I want to see all the option, all the variables I had. Sorry, I'm just creating some space down here so you can see it when I hit Control Space. All the um, things that you can do in a world. The one you're going to do most of the time for now is this add object, which is to add the object that you created. The car three won't be there unless I actually add it to the world. Um, you see, I'll, let me take this out and just show you. Right, right now there's still only two cars in the world. Car three exists in the uh, 
CPU as a computer, but it does not exist in my world yet. It's, it's not, I haven't added it. So um, I will do add object. I'll call it, I'll add car three. I will um, put it at 50 comma 50. So up in the upper left-hand corner, I'll compile it. And I look at that, I forgot my semicolon. This is actually an important lesson. Notice I have made a syntax error. I have forgotten to put in a semicolon. And what happens when I compile? It will not compile. This is Java. Um, so so uh, the compile button, this is the button that turns it, that turns your code, these words, into a language that the computer understands. There's a thing that called the compiler that does that. You have not seen this if you've done something like Khan Academy, Khan Academy intro to JavaScript, because it, this just happens behind the scenes. This is Java. Java, you have to actually tell it to do that. And uh, if you press compile and you have a syntax error like I do right here, it will stop. And fortunately, sometimes it'll tell me, oh, look, semicolon expected. That's a pretty easy problem to solve. Um, but when you when this happens, right, if you if you make a mistake, right, if you put something in there that shouldn't be in there, right, and you press, press compile, it's going to, you know, you'll see the little red underline and it'll tell you, right, this is, um, so uh, that was a compile error. Now I fixed the code. It's compiled. And so now I have my third car. If I run, they'll all start spinning around. Isn't that fun? Not really. Next week, our next lesson, I'm going to show you how to make the cars do something a bit more interesting, like respond to your actual commands. I'll see you then.